What is Grand Central Dispatch? That's a question you're definitely gonna get at your next technical interview. So I'm gonna go over the basics. We're gonna talk about threads, queues, the difference between serial and concurrent queues, as well as the difference between synchronous and asynchronous functions. Grand Central Dispatch, or GCD as most people know it, is the API responsible for managing your queues and your threads. Let's start with the second part of that, threads. If you're in the tech sphere, then you've heard of multi-core processors. And you may have even wondered, what even is a core? Well, the core is the physical component of your computer. That's what enables it to process all of the computational tasks you throw at it. A thread is the virtual component. This is what handles the tasks and completes them in an effective manner. I like to think of the core as the muscle and the thread as the brains behind any operation. Managing and creating threads is pretty difficult. This is because you'd have to optimize for hardware resources. That's why Apple created GCD for us. GCD shifts the burden of thread management from the developer to the operating system. So the system performs your tasks by making the best use of its hardware resources. And you, the dev, can focus on writing concurrent code. Moving on to the second thing that GCD is responsible for, queues. Dispatch queues are just a bunch of tasks that are lined up or queued up, waiting for an available thread to execute them. Just like with any other kind of queue, dispatch queues are always started in a first in, first out fashion or FIFO, as you'll hear the cool kids say. Kind of like how a line at a cash register would work. The first person to get in line is the first person to pay and is the first person to leave the store. But notice that I said queues are started in a FIFO fashion. That's because even though they start in a FIFO order, there's no guarantee that they're gonna end in a FIFO order. When your task ends depends on several factors. One being whether you requested the task to be executed serially or concurrently. Again, if you're not familiar with the term serial or concurrent, that's fine. We'll go over that later. There are different types of queues. By default, every app gets one main queue and four background queues. You can also create your own queues, but we're not gonna cover that in this video. Let's start with the main queue. The main queue is in charge of all UI related work. So it draws your app's UI and responds to the user interactions like scrolling, dragging, panning, etc. The system uses a single thread to process all the blocks of code from the main queue. Because the single thread belongs to the main queue, it's often referred to as the main thread. All UI work must be executed on the main queue. But the fact that it only has one thread to execute this code means that it's fairly easy to block this queue. And if you block this queue for too long, that's when your UI locks and you get the infamous speech ball of doom. To prevent this, we throw all computationally intensive tasks on a background queue instead. A background queue really is just any queue that isn't your main. These are for non-UI tasks, which, as I mentioned, usually require some complex computation. Now, having two or more queues is pretty efficient, since background queues run in parallel with the main queue. It means that your app can draw beautiful animations on its screen while fetching user data in the background. Now that we have a firm understanding of what queues and threads are, I want to take the time to talk about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous execution, as well as the difference between serial and concurrent queues. The reason being that for a long time when I saw the word synchronous, I automatically equated that with serial. And when I saw asynchronous, my mind immediately jumped to concurrent. However, these aren't quite the same thing as we'll see. Let's start first with the difference between serial and concurrent queues. This distinction refers to the type of the destination queue. So in other words, the queue to which you're dispatching your code. Tasks are submitted or dispatched to a queue in the form of an anonymous closure. This is how that looks in code. In this example, we're dispatching our print statement from a background queue to our main queue. 
Remember how I said that the main queue uses a single thread to process all of its tasks? Well, that makes it a serial queue. Serial queues are queues that only work with one thread. Thus, they only execute one task at a time. So what does this mean for the order of execution? Well, because serial queues only work with one thread, not only are we guaranteed that tasks will start in a FIFO order, but we also know that they're gonna finish in that same order. When a serial queue has started running one task, all other tasks in that queue will have to wait until it's finished with that task. So while serial queues offer a predictable order of execution, they're also slow because of the fact that they're only dealing with one task at a time. By contrast, a concurrent queue will create as many threads as needed to complete its tasks. Again, you, the dev, don't have to worry about what is the optimal number of threads to use. This is something that GCD optimizes for you. Just like with serial queues, tasks are always kicked off in a FIFO order. But unlike serial queues, tasks can finish in any order. So while concurrent queues are faster, they're also a little unpredictable as to when a task finishes. And this can be a problem. Let's say you want to fetch a user's photos. And right after you receive them, you want to compress them. Well, your compression task depends on your fetch photos task being completed first. If your compression task were to finish before your fetch photos task, you might end up with some or even none of your photos compressed. This is what's known as a race condition. Race conditions occur when a system's behavior is dependent on the sequence or timing of uncontrollable events. It becomes a bug when one or more of these possible behaviors is undesirable. So, when is it advisable to use a serial queue or a concurrent queue? If we don't care about the order in which your tasks are going to finish, then it's recommended that you use a concurrent queue. It's faster. If you do care about the order in which your tasks finish, though, then you should use a serial queue. Let's talk about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous execution. Often, you'll see these referred to in code as just sync and async. These two methods of execution affect the source of the task. In other words, it's referring to the queue from which that task was dispatched. If the code is dispatched synchronously, that means it's going to block all the other tasks on the current queue until that task is finished. In this example, we know we're dispatching to a background queue. But where are we dispatching from? If we're dispatching from another background queue, then we don't have to worry about blocking since GCD will spawn as many threads as necessary to complete its tasks. However, if we're dispatching from the main queue, then main will be blocked until the code here finishes running. Okay, so we know that sync calls block the current queue, but what about async calls? Async calls, on the other hand, return control to its caller immediately, with no guarantees as to when the code inside the closure will execute. You'll also hear devs say that the code inside async closures has suspended itself. It's almost as if async calls are super polite. They tell the OS, hey, here's this work that needs to be done, but don't worry, take your time. So the difference between sync and async boils down to when control is returned to the caller. Is it returned immediately or is it returned only after completion? If it's returned immediately, then we've asynchronously executed that task. If control is returned only after task completion, then the task has been executed synchronously. You can think of synchronous as blocking. And blocking isn't necessarily a bad thing, unless of course you've frozen your UI. But generally, blocking just means that nothing else on your queue will run until the current task is finished. Sometimes you might even want this blocking behavior. Like when you wanna ensure thread safety. If you have a method that updates a value and you call that method from multiple threads at the same time without synchronization, you're gonna get a data race. Data races occur when multiple threads access a mutable object and at least one thread is writing to it. Let me give you a real world example. 
Let's imagine that you and your partner have a shared bank account with $50 in it. You go to the store and want to buy something for $35. Now, being the responsible adult that you are, you first check your banking app to make sure that you have enough money in your account. You see that you do, so you buy it. Unbeknownst to you though, your partner is currently out buying groceries. And at the exact same moment that you checked your bank account, they also checked the account and saw there was $50 in it. So they bought $40 worth of groceries. After both purchases, you now have negative $15 in your joint account, which is not what either of you intended or wanted. Translating that back to multi-threading, you and your partner are both threads accessing the same mutable object, the joint account. Your partner read the joint account at the same time that you were updating it, resulting in a bug in your finances. What you two needed in this instance was a way to coordinate that access, making sure that no one other than you could read from the account until after you were done updating it. And this is what Sync offers, coordinated access to a shared resource. So I would use Sync for small tasks like updating a value. Otherwise, if you're submitting a large task like image processing, for instance, then consider doing it asynchronously to avoid blocking the current queue for too long. In sum, sync and async is a question of whether your current task should suspend itself, whereas serial and concurrent is a question of what kind of queue you want to dispatch your task to. If you liked this video, hit that like button. If you want to hear me explain more iOS related concepts, drop me a comment about what you want to listen to next.